Wild Edible Plants Part 8. Buttercups are a very widespread and diverse group of plants. They are extremely toxic and you need to be very careful of the sap. It will cause chemical burns. The seeds are actually edible if you parch them first. The plants are less toxic after they've been dried out. You would still need to exercise extreme caution with this group of plants though. They are, like I said, very toxic. They're like the uh, blister agent of the plant world. Yellow mignonette are good in salads. You can eat either the flowers or the leaves. The leaves can be collected all season and they are tender and taste good raw. The roots are used to make a yellow dye. The plants are native of Eurasia and North Africa. They have become a common weed throughout much of the world, especially Australia. Gooseberries and currants are closely related. Gooseberries have the hairier fruit. Currants are smooth. Currants have kind of a stripe pattern that looks sort of like a basketball. They both usually have little projections on the end of their fruit. The berries are usually very good raw. They're sweet and good. They make good jellies. The fruits usually ripen either in the su late summer or in the fall. Wild roses are a very common plant. The main edible part is the, the fruit or the rose hips. They are very high in vitamin C. They're also available during the winter time when most berries and fruit aren't available. You can also eat the seeds, but they're a bit bitter. Probably need to be parched and leached. Blackberries or brambles are very widespread. I don't see them too often down here in Southern California. I find them quite a lot in Northern California. They have some really awful spines when you walk past the vines. They will cut your ankles pretty good. The fruit are really excellent though. Sourdough are a very widespread common group of plants. You have to be a bit careful of them. They're very high in oxalic acid. That's where the uh, sourness comes from. They are quite relished by many people. They have a very good texture when cooked. They are also highly nutritious. The leaves, root, seeds, and stem are all edible. Some people even make pies out of the leaves like uh, rhubarb pie. Seeds can be eaten either raw or cooked. The edible part of arrowhead are the tubers. The leaves are actually toxic. One of the tubers I have pictured is a thousand years old, by the way. The way they are gathered is usually with the feet. You, you stick them up with your feet and you just stir up the area and they'll float to the surface. You can't pull the tubers up. The plants will break easily. They are usually picked after the uh, plants die away. That would be late summer or early fall. Pickle weeds are succulents that grow in salt marshes. The edible parts are the leaves and the seeds. The leaves are usually best heating in the uh, late summer. They have a hard inner core that's easily removed. They do require a little bit of cooking. They have a somewhat salty flavor. As the name suggests, they are sometimes pickled. The seeds are small and hard to collect, but they're very rich in protein and oil. White sage, along with other sage, have edible leaves and seeds. The leaves are mostly used for condiments or flavoring. They are good for adding to a stew. The seeds can be roasted and ground into a meal. Young stems can also be used as a pot herb. The plant is best eating in the late summer. You need to remove the woody core from the stems though. The seeds of thistle sages are edible. They are generally roasted and then ground into a powder. It can be added to wheat to improve the flavor. It's also sometimes steeped to make tea. The woolly white basil leaves resemble thistles. The scent is similar to citronella. Chia are relatives of sage. They also have seeds that are roasted and ground into meal. It is said to have a nutty flavor. The seeds can be added to salads or sandwiches. They are said to add a refreshing flavor. 
I imagine those are the plants they used to make Chia Pets. You need to be very careful eating elderberry. Many of them are very, very poisonous. Even parts of blue elderberry are toxic. Some people get sick eating the berries. They are commonly made into wine, jams, and preserves. Make sure you don't eat red el elderberries or unripe elderberries. They can be lethal. The stems are very toxic. The leaves of burnet can be eaten either raw or cooked. They are best before the plant comes into flower. The leaves are a little fiddly to collect and they sometimes become bitter in the hot sun. The leaves are actually quite nutritious. They have a, almost 6% protein and 1% fat and also 11% carbohydrates. They're actually members of the rose family. Greasewood are a deciduous shrub growing to almost nine feet tall. The edible part are the tender young growing twigs. They can be diced and boiled until tender. The seeds are also edible. The seeds are very small so they're not often eaten. Bullrush are actually related to cattails. They have very similar edible parts. You can eat the pollen, the roots, the seeds, the stems. Like cattails, the roots are very rich in starch. The pollen is very nutritious. It's good to be mixed with flour or something like that. Those are very common aquatic plants. You see them very often near the water. Foxtail are a kind of grass very similar to millet. The seeds are used very much the same way. It can be used in all the same ways that rice is used. It can be grounded to a flour or made into porridge, cakes, puddings, etc. The seeds can also be sprouted. They'll be somewhat sweeter. That's how malt is made from barley. Silver buffalo berries are edible. They are also called soap berries because they contain low concentrations of saponins. They are somewhat toxic, not so much in humans as most animals. Saponins can also be removed through cooking. The berries become sweeter after the first frosts. Prairie mallow are members of the mallow family, so they're probably not too dangerous but you should be careful because there's very little information on this particular plant. Sources report that the leaves are edible. They can be cooked as greens, but beyond that there's no information really about them. They are also known as checker blooms or checker mallows. Jojoba is a shrub native to the Sonoran and Mojave deserts. It is most famous for the nut and the uh, oil it produces. The nut is almost 50% oil. It is widely used in the cosmetics industry where it replaced the uh, oil from sperm whales. The nut is edible both raw or cooked. Hedge mustard is not really a member of the mustard family. Young plants can be used as pot herbs. The seeds can be roasted and ground into flour. It is said to have a bitter cabbage-like flavor. They are usually used as a flavoring in salads or cooked as a pot herb. The seeds can be eaten raw or cooked. The seeds are said to have a mustard-like flavor. That's probably where it gets its name. That's the end of part eight.